Hello, and welcome to my speed run of this horse. I will be making it as fast as I can. And then putting it in the Unity and hooking it up as quickly as I can. Bar a bunch of dumb mistakes. And then putting it into VR chat as a totally working meme dancing quadruped. There's nothing too important for this first part of the video, <laughs> except marveling at how obviously and hideously self-taught I am with this box modeling. This is someone who can barely use a computer doing something really impressive, really poorly. <laughs> Nothing too important. You just have to pose yourself sort of neutrally standing in the same kind of neutral standing position that, um, you know, your humanoid in its neutral A pose is standing in. Now you do want it to be a little cute and a little jaunty. Your legs don't actually have to be as straight up and down as a horse's happen to be. But you're not going to have much success if they're like crazy out to the side like a lizard's. Oh, and you want your head and neck to be in an upright and alert position. I suppose you could have them slung forward but it's not going to give um, as pleasant of a result to actually wear in the game. Speed. Yeah, so your humanoid is gonna go where your, your viewpoint is gonna be shared by this quad you're gonna be wearing. So as close as you can get your front end and your front feet like under the head, the better, but it, it doesn't need to be perfect for the movement of the animal, just for your own ability to enjoy your front feet. I went out and looked at a horse at that uh, video transition. And then my mom came by and critiqued its anatomy, none of which I changed. This is a one hour animal. <laughs> Oh, um, you probably should use a reference. Uh, you want a skeletal reference for your armature later to get your bone angles right, because the better you match the bone angles of the actual animal, the better you'll move later on. And I move fairly poorly because I did not use any kind of appropriate reference for this. Um, you also want to just use references generally to just really make sure that your effect is nice because otherwise you will just kind of look like a couple of people in a horse costume no matter what you're trying to look like which is definitely the effect that this horse gets but again you can get a much 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 better result if you just take a little time to reference your animal's limbs and how they're supposed to articulate the lengths of each section their relation to each other and definitely 100% later in the skeleton, getting a nice reference. You'll get a much better result than I do. And my result is perfectly cute and adequate, right? But you can do way, way better than this. Now, 
I mess up here. I try their easy rig, uh, but I decide against it because in VR chat you do need some fingers, and I just don't mind deleting a bunch of stuff out of the meta rig. So just wait. And just follow along here. Basically, um, you need to delete the palm bones in your hand, which I'm going to forget here in a minute, and they're going to come back and clutter up my unity later. So don't forget. Don't be like me. There's some bones in the palm that aren't finger bones. You want to delete those. I miss them. Leave your eyes. Leave your jaw. Just get all this random junk out. Um, I will be moving the hips around in accordance with Kung's full body tracking fixes. He has an amazing YouTube video that's K-U-N-G, Kung, um, full body tracking fixes. He totally makes everything work properly. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Definitely look at his video. In um, our case, if you're also using the Rigify MetaHuman, you just need to lift those hips up to be um, above the thighs, and you'll see me do it. You might want to also change the shoulders a little bit. Again, go watch Kung's video, but you don't have to. They won't be affecting our simple, actually regular quad rig here. Um, now, the proportions and angles of these bones in relation to each other will change how your critter moves later on. It won't ruin anything, but if later you have everything hooked up and then you come back and change some stuff in here, you will change whatever effect you manage to achieve. So don't be surprised. Just do something moderate and normal here, or not. Do something crazy here if you want, but be advised that if you change it, a whole bunch of other stuff is going to change. Now, the only really important thing at this stage, you'll notice I'm working from an isometric view from the side. That's extremely important because these legs have to be absolutely straight up and down, like from the front. Their angles here from this view can be anything, and you should try to match a skeletal reference of your creature as closely as you can. I kind of mess up the shoulders here, which is why my horse moves a little bit stiffly later on. Um, so definitely reference the step for your limbs. And in a minute here, I'm gonna go from isometric top view your legs need to be totally straight up and down, um, and their width apart should be the width of your hips and the width of your animal's shoulders. Um, past that, any kind of jauntiness or visual interest that your character has, you're going to have to have in the mesh, because obviously if you have, you know, your mesh perfectly ma matching these weird straight up and down bones, that's maybe not going to look as lively as it oughta. So don't. You can have your mesh be outside the bones. They still work okay. Um, one thing about this style of rigging, because it's driven almost entirely by your thigh and your shin bones, none of these things are going to twist, except at the very top joint of the hip and the shoulder. And maybe if you decide that you want to deal with getting the foot and toe in on the and most bones, so those might twist a little, but I don't recommend it. So since none of this stuff is going to twist, it's it's okay. You don't have to worry about getting super weird, you know, responses by um, having your mesh be outside your bones a little bit. Okay, I tell a lie. It will twist a little bit, but it's really not going to twist that much. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so here's your main bone. It comes right out of your hips. It's called bone in all capitals by me. You want it to go all the way back through your whole animal, and it should be the parent of all of your quadruped, everything, your legs, your limbs. This bone, this huge bone, is going to have a leveling rotation constraint on it. And we are making another bone called Bob, which an unparented bone in your armature is uh, necessary for the unity rigging. It's what allows the magic of keeping your back level to happen. This other funky bone that I just made, I don't know if I've named it yet. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Um, it's going to be called bend. That bone is going to put a little bit of a wiggle in your torso. It's going to put a bend in you that you otherwise wouldn't have. You'll see what I mean. It's pretty important, I would say. Both of these stick right off of your hips. This is how I do weight painting. It's easy. Um, I parent it with empty groups, and then I lock everything, because your human shouldn't actually be weighted to any of this stuff, except from your hips on up right? So I lock everything at zero, and then I go through and I just do my torso chain up through the head. Kind of poorly. I forget the ears here. It's unexpected effect. 
And then with all that stuff locked, all your humanoid stuff that you don't want showing up locked, then you run the automatic weight paint and it's probably gonna be mostly fine. Here it's mostly fine. Again, because my shoulders were not great, as my mom pointed out. Uh, I have some issues here. I think that bone is probably not long enough. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. It's close enough. It's a horse. Whoops. Just going to fix that. There. Now it's a horse. And... Oh yeah, now I'm gonna do the bend. This is fine, yes, this will happen. Your neck will go super long and crazy like that. You hardly ever bend your back that way in VR chat. It's like, it doesn't happen. People pretty much won't ever see that happening. It's fine, don't worry about it. So this is my main bone. I'm just making sure that's weighted to try to keep most of my body under control. And now the bend bone, the automatic weight painting didn't do it any favors, so we're gonna take it away from there and you'll see what the purpose of this bone is when I just sort of get it started and then demonstrate. So this bone sticks out the back of your hips and as you do stuff, as you twerk, as you run around, it's supposed to, you wanna weight it so that it lifts up, whoo, lifts up your back and then bows your back when you move it the other way. And now you will not appear to be perfectly rigid and stiff through your back. Because that will add a lot of liveliness. Now VR chat pretty much just moves your neck and your head up there, that's about it. As long as it looks okay for those two, it's almost entirely fine. So we're good here. Now getting into the Unity. Cool. Okay. I already have a project open. This is not a tutorial on how to use Unity. Okay, so doing the VR chat specific settings, getting our rig humanoid, and this is always garbage. I think one time I was blessed with it like perfectly auto-populating, and that has never happened since. Um, you're just gonna have to drag your humanoid core everything from it into the little boxes and it sucks. And this is where it came back to bite me that I hadn't deleted those palm bones. As someone with ADHD, it's almost impossible for me to like look at one thing and then like look at something else and remember what I was doing. So I hate this step, but I did it. I get a lot of practice at it and I'm still really bad at it. So that's how you know it's a disorder. VR chat just needs like, I think three fingers. So I just put the um, proximal joints of all of them in. Works well enough. I forget what I'm doing here. You don't want anything on your bob bone, your plumb bob bone. It's just an unparented bone. It just hangs out. Uh, but you do want your bend bone to be weighted at something to your bob bone. Um, for this one, I, I had the weight very low at like 0.3. So it's your bend bone is still gonna waggle everywhere. Um, your bone, all capitals bone, that should be weighted at a strength of one to one in your rotation constraint to your plumb bob bone. You want that to stay perfectly sticking out behind you at all times. Now, what I'm doing here is I am going through and I am um, just adding, it's a lot of clicking. So I'm just adding a rotation constraint to every bone in my quadruped legs. And I'm opening up little sources window on each of them just because it's so much clicking. I just do it in batches. Uh, now I'm going through and I'm adding the likely targets to each of these. Now just, just trust me, the pattern is you start at the top um, where like the animal's shoulder is and you put, um, you start with the thigh and then the next bone down is shin. The one after that is thigh again. The one after that is shin again. That pattern, thigh, shin, thigh, shin, down the leg chain will get you almost all of the way here. Now. Um, that does break down for this beast here. Oh, I'm also making a mistake here while this is happening in the background. Um, I tried to do this and it didn't work. You can't just go straight to play mode like I tried. I was like, oh, I know it needs to be. No. First, before you go to play mode, you have to um, set these guys up with something and then activate them. Now, so you can't see the humanoid right now, but my humanoid is actually in its A pose out of Blender. When you load something into um, that like rig menu thing that Unity does, you know, you enforce T pose as part of your import pr procedure. But once you go back into Unity, you know, it stops being a T pose, it goes back to whatever pose that you had it, right? So my humanoid is right now in an A pose. 
Um, so that's not really relevant for your legs, but if you're doing stuff with your arms and your wings, that does have an effect, uh, but I won't be getting into that. Um, so basically I have a humanoid in front and what I'm doing after I have activated my rotation constraints with something, I think here I put 0.5 on each of them and then pressed the activate button, boom, that's it. Has a target, has a number here, you press the activate button. As long as you are in your neutral pose and the quadruped bone is in its neutral pose, you're good and you haven't messed anything up, right? Then I went to play mode and now that it has been activated, when I lifted my humanoid core leg up and then, uh, so I lifted up the thigh and then I swung the shin back a little bit. So I'm like making 90 degrees, right? I would watch the leg respond and then I would move the slider around, tweak the different values, try to get a good effect. Like if you've seen a statue of a horse and it has its front leg like really hiked up into like a, a nice strong angle. When I pick up my human leg to a similar degree, I want to see the horse leg or the quad leg also hike itself up to a similar degree. Now, if you want to be neat and tidy about this, what you're aiming for is you want the quadrupeds like foot to wind up at the same height as your foot, more or less. That will help reduce floor clipping. Now, you're always gonna clip when you go into crouch or prone, they shove you into the floor right? Even if they look good, they shove you into the floor. So I actually tend to disable those um, with some custom locomotion tweaks. But uh, for regular walking stuff and people standing, moving around, uh, you won't get any clipping if you make sure that at that like extreme leg position, your feet are at the same height. Um, what I'm noticing here is that that thigh shin, thigh shin, thigh shin pattern broke down at the very last couple of bones. So if you notice one is like, wait, this is bending the wrong way. There's only two options for what it could be. So I switched it from thigh to shin, and now it's good. You can introduce the foot and stuff into these, but your first step is getting just um, the thigh shin action to drive your chain appropriately into your satisfaction. Get that first, then get foot in there because it is going to do a lot of confusing and upsetting things to have um, the foot be influencing anything in this chain, except at the very, very end of it. Like do not put foot way up high in this, way up high in this chain, it'll screw you up. Here I'm noticing that there, yeah, that there's something up with that shoulder. And so I just decided um, one of these values, I was gonna go back and dial way down. That one, bonk it down from one to like 0.4. Notice I am deactivating the constraint before I do anything to it. I used to think you would ruin everything forever if you changed one of these while it was active, but you won't ruin everything forever. You just need to, once it's ruined, deactivate your constraint and then um, there's a way of like reverting a transform so it stops sucking. I do that later. But anyway, so this is just me testing those values, making sure they're all right. And then since I'm in play mode, memorizing my little numbers here, and then bringing them back. Oh, that's the other thing. So these last two bones, the toe three and toe four, um, if you have, so a constraint further down the chain, if I have two in a row that are weighted at a strength of one, the first one that's one is gonna look fine. And then the second one that has the same target that's also weighted to one, its constraint is just gonna be satisfied by the one that was upstream of it. So it's not gonna add anything because as the one upstream of it rotates at one, it itself like is rotated at one. It's like, oh, one, one, good, we're good. So if I want both of those bones in the end of my foot to like have an effect, I have to have the one at the very end, at the very tip be one. And then the one upstream from that just needs to be something less than one. So I have like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, something. It has to be a smaller number. Then once you have one leg good, and now your front legs, you wanna have the right stuff driving the right stuff and the left stuff driving the left stuff, and it's fine. For your back legs, if you want your horse to walk, or, or your whatever, to walk around normally, like the left back leg is going to be driven by the right humanoid core leg, and the right back leg is gonna be driven by the left humanoid core leg. They're gonna be reverse and that's gonna make you walk around properly. Now, as I'm going through, I am adding an extra target because if 
um, someone in full body is wearing this or you've set it up to start doing meme dances or twerk or whatever, when the wearer or the animation takes a wide humanoid stance, sets their feet wide apart, the front legs will go wide apart and it's completely fine. But the back legs, because they act in reverse, are going to cross. And so for wide stance stances and specific hijinks that full body users might be getting up to, what you want to do for your hind legs is um, make sure that you have two spaces for targets. And your regular ordinary one is in reverse, like I said, left to right, right to left. And your second one, if this is your first time doing it, just leave it alone for now. Um, but your, your other one is going to be to the um, opposite humanoid front leg. And you will use an animation to change the weights of the constraint from like one zero to zero one. And your back legs will act the other way and they won't cross behind you anymore. But then, you know, you have to have your animation set you back to normal after. I'm just leaving space for it here so that if you're like, oh, my back legs are crossing, this looks like garbage. The way to address that is not the bogus ways that I wound up doing, but simply have there be an alternate set of targets and um, change the, you know, the weighting between those targets with an animation. So you can switch from one set of targets to the other set of targets leaving the constraint active the entire time. Now this back leg goes a little more easily. So as I've got my humanoid leg hiked up in front and the stuff was activated before I went into play mode, as I tweak these numbers around, you can just really see me bringing that leg out of a super weird high hike into like an appropriate amount of leggy. I don't know. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go through, remember all these numbers. Back legs are always a little bit easier, simpler, especially if it's a horse. And so I'm not doing like a ton of testing. Like this is the test is you have your humanoid core leg, even though you can't see them, I hate they're invisible. I guess there's like an add-on or something for that, but like, I don't know, I'm just doing it invisibly. Um, but hike up your humanoid legs, kind of like a sit chair position and change all these constraint values, testing in play mode, to get your quad legs to hike up into a, you know, physiologically appropriate equivalent for that animal of also hiking up its legs and trying to keep the animal feet at the same height, you know, uh, eventual height as your humanoid feet. So here I am deactivating all the constraints before I mess with them. Oh wait, no, I, uh, I messed with them. So this is me fixing them. So this is, oh, it doesn't show the window pop-ups. That's bizarre. Well, so when I'm clicking on that gear, what's happening is I'm getting a little drop-down window that gives me the option to highlight something called modified component. If I highlight that, I get another option. And then I am clicking on revert. And that's just 100% making sure that um, when I changed the constraints target while it was active, that I'm just, setting everything back to normal. I'm going through activating them properly with their correct settings. You will not believe how many ways I figured out how to do all of this incorrectly in the past. We're nearly there. Can't think of anything else. Um, anyway, so this horse is going to move kind of stiffly and poorly, but it is going to move. And if I had taken longer than about an hour for all of this, uh, it would move a lot better. You can go to, um, well, I don't know, it's still in community labs right now, but I have some other quadruped avatars. They're all, uh, they're all griffins. But um, those ones, I took um, a lot more time and a lot more care in trying to get their legs to respond appropriately. And you can tell that they move a lot better than this horse is going to move. But you can get a, uh, a much nicer response, again, just by looking at a skeletal reference, making sure your bones have the same lengths and angles as your target animal, that they're set up right, and that your mesh looks nice and cute and jaunty around the bones, and that you get your um, values here looking good and you, you will get a much nicer. <laughs> this, is, this is like pretty darn good. Like, it's good though. Like, I'm not gonna be down on my, like, that's pretty good. Dang, like, look at that. 
Like, wow, but you can do better. Just take a little more time than an hour and you can do like even way better. I believe in you. And then here's me trying to upload it to VR chat. And I don't know why it didn't capture that window, but um, I forget I had some problems. Anyway, so all of this is, I think, this is nothing. Yeah, this is nothing. Okay. And then I'm bringing it into VR chat. I built and test it. That's what I did. Build and test button. Then I'm going to go find it. And then, of course, this space in front of the mirror is like really small, but there I am. I can crouch badly. And again, it will send you to the floor. That is not because you have any values wrong. It's just because crouch puts you in the floor. But I can walk around and be a horse. I'm going to go to a better mirror that has a little more room. Yay, mirror time. Boop. We're not paying attention to my other avatars. We are paying attention to horse right now. And there you are. Oh my goodness. Wow. There you are. You are doing humanoid animations. You are being a human horse. Ah, uh, the human horse. There it is. It's working. It's like uh, you, you, you can see the action of that bend bone in, um, in how you respond to crouch and prone, especially. There's really, it really brings a lot of life um, into your model to have that bend bone that can like, raise and lower your back like it's really good it totally camouflages the fact that you're stiff as a board and this one was um constrained at just 0 0.3 to kind of damp down a little bit of that waggle anyway yeah so you go through the default vr chat step there you are and you can really see how like it's mostly just your head and your neck that move with this even with dancing like you're not gonna that way that your neck got super huge you you'll hardly ever see anything like don't backflip it's cursed hmm Yep, and here you are. You too can bring your duct tape creation to life in this fashion. If you make anything cool, definitely show me because I wanna see, hey, good luck, peace out.